Now, let's review the control panel. Located on the right side of the cab, you will find a full-color touchscreen and mini round joystick with buttons. The user-friendly touchscreen is used to manage the whole machine. It is very easy to navigate, highly intuitive, and can present in 12 different languages. The machine management software installed on the touchscreen gathers all usage data and displays them over five different pages on the screen. Navigating between these pages is extremely easy, even for beginners. Navigation and selection can be achieved either by touching the screen or via the round joystick, whichever you prefer. The Magni has integrated diagnostics for fast and simple troubleshooting of electrical issues resulting in less downtime. If a fault is detected, the system automatically shuts off any movement likely to worsen the fault and displays an alarm code which you can share with your dealer's service department. So let's go ahead and explore this amazing system. As mentioned previously, there are five pages available. You will find that all of the pages contain the following items. On the top left corner of the screen is a Magni M. Depressing this will provide access to various service menus. You should not utilize this function unless you're a trained service technician or are being instructed remotely to do so by your dealer. On the top right corner of the screen is the warning alarm, which will flash if needed to indicate an issue with the machine. If flashing, depress that item, which will provide you with specific codes that should be shared with a Magni authorized service technician. At the top left center of the screen is the time of day. At the top right center is the total hours logged on the machine. At the bottom of each screen, you'll notice right and left arrows. These can be used to toggle between the five screens. On all screens, anytime a button is displayed in the color blue, this indicates that the function is on or active. Now, let's review the driving page. The driving page contains the options available to the driver relating to driving the machine. In the upper screen area, at the top left of the page, is the selection for the speed range. There are two speeds available. You have Turtle, which is slow, and Rabbit, which is high. Turtle is the low gear and is mostly used when additional torque is needed. This would include on the job site, when loading the machine on a flatbed, or when moving up an incline. Rabbit is the high gear and used when the operator desires to drive the machine at a higher rate of speed. The Magni can go up to 25 miles per hour, but this should only be done when the machine is in two-wheel steering mode. The turret is locked and the boom is fully retracted and the attachment is secured. Anytime you're on outriggers, we suggest that you put the machine in Rabbit mode as the hydraulic functions will perform faster. To set the speed range, the machine must first be in neutral with the engine at idle. Depress the brake pedal and touch the button to activate the mode you want. You'll actually see a turtle or rabbit image. At the top center is your speed indicator, which is displayed in miles per hour. At the top right is the transmission reset button, which will reset the synchronizers in the transmission if needed. Next, we have the DEF add blue gauge, which indicates the percentage of fluid remaining in the tank. It is important to note that this level must be maintained at over 25% or the machine will derate and the engine function will diminish. While you can override this, if you do it more than three times, the engine will not come out of derate mode and an authorized dealer will be required to visit the machine. Next is the RPM gauge. Here is the engine temperature gauge. Located in the center is your fuel gauge. Magnes only operate using diesel fuel. Clustered between these gauges is the instrument panel, which contains many warning lights. Should you encounter one, please refer to your manual and call your authorized dealer. Here is the parking brake indicator light to let you know it is engaged or not. Looking at the middle of the screen, you will see two circles over the top of the machine picture. The top smaller circle illustrates the position of the turret rotation. When the green is illuminated, the turret is positioned over the center. The large white circle illustrates the level of the machine's chassis. There is a green bubble sensor which shows the actual position. When the bubble sensor is located within the small center circle, it tells you that the machine is level. Unless moving the machine, you should always operate it when the machine is fully level. On the left side of the machine picture, there are three buttons that allow you to select the type of steering. Starting from the top and working down, one, front, two-wheel steering, two, all, four-wheel steering, three, crab, all tires facing in the same direction. To change between steering modes, turn the wheel straight until the tire indicator turns green. Depress the brake pedal and push the desired steering function button, which will turn blue when activated. If the wheels are not straight, the desired steering function button will blink. To correct, simply turn the steering wheel slowly to straighten the wheels and steering function will engage. 
to the right side of the machine picture and starting from the top, there is an indicator that is only used when the Nordic package, which is for extreme cold weather environments, is installed on the machine. If it were, this would indicate whether the turret rotation is locked or not. Next, you'll find a circle next to the front and rear tires, which will illuminate green when each of the tires are straight. Working down from the top, you'll find a button that switches from two to four wheel drive. Below this is the boom damper, whose function is to minimize vibration to the boom and the load when the machine is moving. This should be engaged when driving any distance or at high speed with or without a load. Below is the eco option. When the eco mode function is engaged, the machine can drive at the maximum speed using only 1800 RPM, which provides increased fuel efficiency. Located below the machine picture are plus and minus buttons. These are used to increase or decrease the RPMs during warm-up. Lastly, in the center is the chassis tilt lock for the rear axle. This is an automatic function and acts as an indicator only. Next is the stabilization page. Magni RTH machines are unique in that the stabilizers provide an unlimited setup potential resulting in the best load chart possible under all conditions. The stabilization page is where you control the stabilizers and level the machine. You can operate all four outriggers at once or one at a time. Starting from the top left area of the screen, note the button that looks like a bullseye. This is the self-leveling button and is used in conjunction with the outrigger down switch to level the machine. To the right is the button with four check marks, which allows you to turn on or off all four outriggers at once. Moving to the middle section, next to each tire is a button with a single check mark. If you want to operate a single outrigger, use the four check marks button on top to turn them all off, and then press the appropriate buttons to turn on the one you want to activate. Once you've made your selection of which outriggers you'd like to deploy, you will use the rocker switch located on the right side control panel to extend and retract. Each outrigger is equipped with a proximity reel that will illustrate what percentage your outriggers are deployed. When fully extended, you'll see 100% on the screen next to each outrigger. Once your outriggers are extended to the desired positions, push on the self-leveling button, bullseye, located at the top, so that it is blue and circled in blue. Once this is complete, use the outrigger down switch, located on the right side control panel, to level the machine. Depress and hold the switch in the down position and do not let go. The outriggers will lower to the ground and the machine will lift up and start to level. While this function may stop momentarily, keep holding the button down. The machine will check for level and a box will present itself on the screen saying leveling in progress. The machine will make any final adjustments to ensure that it is level. Once the green bubble indicator is centered in the machine, you can release the button. Above or below each outrigger button, you'll notice a circle with what looks like a hologram. This will illustrate whether your outrigger feet are up or down, and when you have a good ground contact, as evidenced by turning green in color. When the machine is on outriggers, all four must have good ground contact. To lift and retract the outriggers, depress the outrigger up switch located on the right side control panel. Hold the button until the hologram circles indicate that the feet are in the up position. Next, push and hold the outrigger in switch located on the right side control panel. Looking at the screen, you'll see the outriggers moving in and the percentage going down. Hold the button down until all four show 0%. The machine is now ready to be moved. Magni provides an alternative method for operating the outriggers by using the small round joystick located on the right control panel. In order to engage this, you will activate the lock button on the bottom left of the screen. The four holograms will show you by positioning the joystick the function that will happen. Push the joystick left to extend, right to retract, forward for down, back for up. Last is the button on the bottom right. This activates the Bluetooth connection with the radio remote. Next is the load chart page. Magni uses a load moment indicator system, commonly known as LMI, which meets all the criteria for crane regulations. The screen includes a dynamic load chart and all key metrics, which allows the operator to know everything about the load, including where it is located within the chart. This Magni technology eliminates the opportunity for the operator to move into an unsafe zone. This allows you to work faster and safer, resulting in increased productivity. The first thing to note is that once your attachment is secured to the machine, it will be recognized by the RFID system. 
On the screen, you will notice a graphic representation of the attachment, and at the top of the screen, it will list the attachment name. The top area of the screen provides detailed information about your load and the position of the boom. On the top left, there are four measurements which represent the boom position. At the top left is listed the boom length, which is the measurement from the back of the boom to the boom tip. At the top right is the boom height indicator, which is the measurement from the ground to the bottom of the attachment. At the bottom left is the boom angle, which measures the angle from the ground to the bottom of the attachment in degrees. At the bottom right is the radius extension, which is the horizontal measurement from the center of the machine to the load center. On the top right, there are four indicators. This section provides detailed information about your load and the position of the boom. At the top left, it shows you the degrees of rotation of the turret. To the right is a machine picture showing all four measurements we just reviewed that are on the left side of the screen. On the bottom left is the maximum capacity available, which is based on the attachment being used, and on the bottom right is the actual weight being picked. Moving to the center of the machine picture with the gray outline shows you your safe operating zones around the machine, which are based on the positioning of the outriggers. Moving to the middle of the page is the active load chart, which has the anvil in the red circle displaying the location of the load. This anvil moves within the chart as you move the load up or down and in or out. The numbers in yellow are a repeat of the numbers at the top left of the screen. Next is the command page. Starting at the top of the screen are the climate controls. All Magnes come standard with full heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. On the left, you will find the button to turn on the air conditioning. When the color is blue, it is on. To the right is the air recirculation button, which when turned on, will ensure that the air coming through the HVAC system is filtered. Magni uses a HEPA filter system which allows the operator to work in most any conditions while ensuring their safety. Moving just below to the left is the temperature control. You can adjust hotter or colder by pressing the plus or minus signs. To the right is the fan speed control. There are three settings which are adjusted by pressing the plus or minus signs. In the middle of the screen, you'll find the controls for the various working lights. Starting from the right is the button for the boom tip LED work lights. Moving right is the button for the front cab LED work lights. Next is the button to turn on the working beacon light. This amber colored light can be turned on to signal that the machine is in use and it is recommended that you use this feature. On the far right is the button for the back of cab LED work lights. On the bottom portion of the screen and starting at the top left is the drive lock. Moving to the right is the boom damper whose function is to minimize vibration to the boom and the load when the machine is moving. This should be engaged when driving any distance or at high speed with or without a load. Next is the auto RPM selector, which ensures that the machine has a minimum level of RPMs when making picks, etc. This should be left on at all times. Next is the button that activates the Bluetooth connection with the radio remote. The next button is to activate the optional 24 volt power supply. Lastly is the button to engage the reverse radiator fan. Magnes comes standard with an inverted radiator and the fan can be set to blow in reverse to eliminate debris to allow for better airflow. If you activate this, be aware you will hear some noises that are different than under normal function. This is only used if you're working in conditions such as high levels of dust, heavy snowfall, or falling debris. Moving to the bottom row and starting from the left, you have the constant hydraulics button, which activates the ability to adjust the hydraulic pressure that is available at the boom tip. This function is to be activated only when using certain specialty attachments such as drills and hammers. The minus and plus buttons are used to adjust the boom tip hydraulic flow up and down. Last is the customization page. The customization page allows you to program certain functions in order to optimize the safety and efficiency available from your Magni. While we introduce these functions now, the use of them will be covered in the advanced training module. The top area of the screen provides detailed information about your load and the position of the boom. On the top left, there are four measurements which represent the boom position. At the top left is listed the boom length, which is the measurement from the back of the boom to the boom tip. At the top right is the boom height indicator, which is the measurement from the ground to the bottom of the attachment. At the bottom left is the boom angle, which measures the angle from the ground to the bottom of the attachment in degrees. At the bottom right is the radius extension, which is the horizontal measurement from the center of the machine to the load center. 
In the center is a graphic representation of the rotation of the turret. On the top right, there are four indicators. At the top left, it shows you the degrees of rotation of the turret. To the right is a machine picture showing all four measurements we just reviewed that are on the left side of the screen. On the bottom left is the maximum capacity available, which is based on the attachment being used, and on the bottom right is the actual weight being picked. The middle left section is where you can program the limits for the turret rotation. To the middle right is where you can program the limits for boom extension and height. To the far right is the on-off button to activate or turn off the limits you've programmed. The bottom of the page is where you can adjust the hydraulic flow related to certain functions and allows you to increase or decrease the speed of these functions. Starting at the top left is where you adjust the speed for a winch, basket rotation, fork positioner, etc. Just below this is the fork tilt. Moving to the center, top left, is the rotation right and below that is rotation left. At the top center, we have the boom up, and below that is boom down. At the top right is the boom extension, and below that is boom retraction. To the far right, we have four different memory settings, which are similar to the way you program your car seat settings. Below is the power button for this section. If off, all functions will operate at 100%. If on, they will operate in accordance with the limits you have set.